Introduction Do you know that all living organisms need food? It supplies carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins and minerals, all nutrients which we require for the growth, development and health of our body. We get food from plants and animals and this is obtained either from agriculture or animal husbandry. Shruti, our scientists are busy in efforts to improve production from agriculture and animal husbandry. Yes, this is because India is a very populous country and population is more than 1 billion people and is still growing. To feed this growing population, we need more than a quarter of a billion tons of grain every year. To increase this growing need, farming on more land will be required. But as our population is increasing, land for house and industry is also increasing. This in turn results in decrease in cultivable land. As a result, we do not have any major scope for increasing the area of land under cultivation. Therefore, it is necessary to increase our production efficiency for both crops and livestock. We have had two major revolutions for this demand. The Green Revolution, which contributed to increased food grain production. The White Revolution, which has led to better and more efficient use as well as availability of milk. Due to these revolutions, our natural resources are getting used more extensively. This is causing damage to our natural resources to the point of destroying their balance completely. Therefore, it is important that we should increase food production without degrading our environment and disturbing the balances maintaining it. Objectives At the end of this lesson, you'll be able to Understand the improvement in crop yields Find out crop variety improvement Understand the crop production management Understand the nutrient management Understand what manure is Find out properties of fertilizers Understand the irrigation process. Find out cropping patterns. Understand the crop protection management. Study the methods for storage of grains. Improvement in crop yields We all know that cereals such as wheat, rice, maize, millets and sorghum provide us carbohydrate for energy requirement. Similarly, pulses like gram, chana, pea, mutter, black gram, urad, green gram, moong, pigeon pea, arhar, lentil, masoor provide us with protein. While some oil seeds like soybean, groundnut, sesame, castor, mustard, linseed and sunflower provide us with necessary fats. Likewise, fruits, vegetables and spices provide a range of vitamins and minerals in addition to small amounts of proteins, carbohydrates and fats. For animals, some fodder crops like bursim, oats, or Sudan grass are raised as food. Rabi and Kharif crops Do you know that different crops require different climatic conditions, temperature and photo periods for their growth and completion of their life cycle? We have already studied that growth of plants and flowering are dependent on sunlight. There are some crops 
which are grown in rainy season, called the Kharif season from the month of June to October. Paddy, soybean, pigeon pea, maize, cotton, green gram, and black gram are Kharif crops. Some of the crops are grown in the winter season, called the Rabi season from November to April. Wheat, gram, peas, mustard, linseed are Rabi crops. In India, there has been a four times increase in the production of food grains from 1960 to 2004, with only 25% increase in the cultivable land area. Farming practices can be divided into three stages. The first is the choice of seeds for planting. The second is the nurturing of the crop plants. The third is the protection of the growing and harvested crops from loss. Thus, the major groups of activities for improving crop yields can be classified as crop variety improvement, crop production improvement, crop protection management. Crop Variety Improvement Crop variety that can give a good yield is selected from varieties or strains of crops by breeding for various useful characteristics such as disease resistance, response to fertilizers, product quality and high yields. First method of incorporating desirable characters into crop varieties is known by Hybridization Hybridization refers to crossing between genetically dissimilar plants. Hybridization may be intervarietal between different varieties, interspecific between two different species of the same genus, or intergeneric between different genera. Second method of improving the crop is by introducing a gene that would provide the desired characteristic. Introduction results in genetically modified crops. Cultivation practices and crop yield depend on weather, soil quality and availability of water. Since weather conditions such as drought and flood situations are unpredictable, varieties that can be grown in diverse climatic conditions and tolerant to high soil salinity have been developed are useful. Factors for crop variety improvement There are various factors for which there is need for crop variety to be improved. Some of these factors are higher yield to increase the productivity of the crop per acre crop varieties is to be improved. Improved quality. Quality of crop products vary from each and every crop. Baking quality is important in wheat, protein quality in pulses, oil quality in oil seeds and preserving quality in fruits and vegetables. Biotic and abiotic resistance. Crop production can go down due to various biotic and abiotic stresses under different situations. So, improved varieties for these biotic, like diseases, insects, and nematodes, and abiotic, like drought, salinity, heat, water logging, cold and frost resistant can improve crop production. Change in maturity duration. To reduce the cost of crop production, new varieties with short duration has to be developed. Uniform maturity makes the harvesting process easy and reduces losses during harvesting. Wider adaptability There is need to develop the varieties which can survive under different environmental conditions. Desirable agronomic characteristics 
For fodder crops, plants should be tall and profusely branched, while in cereals, dwarfness is desired, so that these crops consume less nutrients. Thus, developing varieties of desired agronomic characters help give higher productivity. Crop Production Management In India, there are small to very large farms. Small farmers have less land, money and access to information and technologies than the big farmers. There is a correlation between higher inputs and yields. The financial condition of farmer decides purchasing capacity for inputs, which in turn decides cropping system and production practices. Therefore, production practices can be at different levels. No-cost production, low-cost production and high-cost production practices. Nutrient Management Plants require nutrients for growth and development. There are 16 nutrients which are essential for plants. Nutrients are supplied to plants by air, water and soil. Air supplies carbon and oxygen, hydrogen comes from water, and soil supplies the other 13 nutrients to plants. Amongst these 13 nutrients, 6 are required in large quantities and are therefore called macronutrients. The other 7 nutrients are used by plants in small quantities and are therefore called micronutrients. Deficiency of these nutrients affect psychological processes in plants including reproduction, growth and susceptibility to diseases. To increase the yield, the soil can be enriched by supplying these nutrients in the form of manure and fertilizers. Manure. Manure contains large quantities of organic matter and also supplies small quantities of nutrients to the soil. Manure is prepared by the decomposition of animal excreta and plant waste. Manure helps in enriching soil with nutrients and organic matter and increasing soil fertility and the soil structure. Manure increases the water holding capacity in sandy soils. In clay soils, the large quantities of manure allow drainage and avoid water logging problems. In using manure, we use biological waste material, which is advantageous in protecting our environment from excessive use of fertilizers. Using biological waste material is also a way of recycling farm waste. Based on the kind of biological material used, manure can be classified as composed, vermicompost, and green manure. Compost The compost is rich in organic matter and nutrients. It is prepared from waste materials of farm like cow dung, domestic waste, sewage waste, straw, eradicated weeds, etc., which is decomposed in a pit. Vermicompost, compost prepared by using earthworms to hasten the process of decomposition of plant and animal refuse is called vermicompost. Green manure, before sowing the crop seeds, some plants like sunhem or guar are grown and then mulched by plowing them into the soil. These green plants thus turn into green manure which help in enriching the soil in nitrogen and phosphorus.
Fertilizers Fertilizers are commercially produced plant nutrients. They supply nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. They are used to ensure good vegetative growth, leaves, branches and flowers, giving rise to healthy plants. Fertilizers are a factor in the higher yields of high-cost farming. Fertilizers should be applied carefully in terms of proper dose, time and observing pre- and post-application precautions for their complete utilization. Due to excessive irrigation, fertilizers get washed away and are not fully absorbed by the plants. This excessive fertilizer then leads to water pollution. Continuous use of fertilizers in an area can destroy soil fertility because the organic matter in the soil is not replenished and microorganisms in the soil are harmed by the fertilizers used. Short-term benefits of using fertilizers and long-term benefits of using manure for maintaining soil fertility have to be considered while aiming for optimum yields in crop production. Organic farming Organic farming is a farming system with minimal or no use of chemicals as fertilizers, herbicides, pesticides, etc. and with a maximum input of organic manures, recycled farm wastes, straw and livestock excreta, use of bioagents such as culture of blue-green algae in preparation of biofertilizers, neem leaves, or turmeric specifically in grain storage as biopesticides with healthy cropping systems. These cropping systems are beneficial in insect, pest and wheat control besides providing nutrients. Irrigation The technique of providing water to crops in the fields by means of canals, reservoirs, wells and tube wells, etc. is called irrigation. Irrigation is important for the following reasons. Supply of essential elements, germination of seeds, growth, absorption of nutrients, the design equipment, and technique of replenishing the soil water deficit by applying irrigation water is known as irrigation system. There are four types of irrigation systems. Wells are made to exploit ground water. They are of two types, that is, dug wells and tube wells. In dug wells, water accumulates due to available ground water table. Canals are connected to reservoirs or rivers to supply water. Canal is divided into sub-canals and distributaries. River lift systems. In areas where canal flow is insufficient or irregular due to inadequate reservoir release, the lift system is more rational. Water is directly drawn from the rivers for supplementing irrigation in areas close to rivers. Tanks are small storage reservoirs which intercept and store the runoff of smaller catchment areas. Cropping Patterns Different ways of growing crops can be used to give maximum benefit. There are three main methods of cropping patterns. Mixed cropping, intercropping, crop rotation. Mixed cropping is growing two or more crops simultaneously on the same piece of land. Example, wheat and gram or wheat and mustard or groundnut and sunflower. This reduces risk and gives some insurance against failure of one of the crops.
Intercropping is growing two or more crops simultaneously on the same field in a definite pattern. The crops are selected on the basis of different need of nutrients. A few rows of one crop alternate with a few rows of a second crop. Example, soybean plus maize or finger millet bajra plus cowpea lobia. Due to this, there is maximum utilization of the nutrient supplied. Intercropping also prevents pests and diseases from spreading to all the plants belonging to one crop in a field. This way, both crops can give better returns. Crop rotation is the growing of different crops on a piece of land in a pre-planned succession. Depending upon the duration, crop rotation is done for different crop combinations. The availability of moisture and irrigation facilities decide the choice of the crop to be cultivated after one harvest. If crop rotation is done properly, then two or three crops can be grown in a year with good harvests. Crop Protection Management When we look around the field, we find that crops are infested by a large number of weeds, insect pests and diseases. If weeds and pests are not controlled at the appropriate time, then they can damage the crops so much that most of the crop is lost. Weeds are unwanted plants in the cultivated field and compete for food, space and light. Example, Xanthium, Gokuru, Parthenium, Gajar Ghas, Cyperinus rotundus, Motha. Weeds take up nutrients and reduce the growth of the crop. Therefore, removal of weeds from cultivated fields during the early stages of crop growth is essential for a good harvest. Generally, insects and pests attack the plants in three ways. They cut the root, stem and leaf. They suck the cell sap from various parts of the plant or they bore into stem and fruit. They thus affect the health of the crop and reduce yields. Diseases in plants are caused by pathogens such as bacteria, fungi and viruses which can be present in and transmitted through the soil, water and air. Weeds, insects and diseases can be controlled by various methods. One of the most common methods is the use of pesticides, which include herbicides, insecticides and fungicides and are sprayed on crop plants or used for treating seeds and soil. As we all know that excessive use of these chemicals creates problem since they can be poisonous to many plant and animal species and cause environmental pollution. Weed control methods also include mechanical removal. You should also know that weed control can also be done by proper seed bed preparation, timely sowing of crops, intercropping and crop rotation or using resistant varieties or deep plowing during summer. Storage of grains In agriculture products, storage losses can be very high. Factors responsible for such losses are biotic, insects, rodents, fungi, mites and bacteria and abiotic, inappropriate moisture and temperatures in the place of storage. You know these factors cause degradation in quality, loss in weight, poor germinability, discoloration of produce, all leading to poor marketability. I should tell you that these factors can be controlled by proper treatment and by systematic management of warehouses. Preventive and control measures are used before grains are stored for future use. 
They include strict cleaning of the produce before storage, proper drying of the produce first in sunlight and then in shade, and fumigation using chemicals that can kill pests. Did you know the Agriculture Ministry's Research and Development Agency has produced 10 new rice varieties it hopes it will boost production and strengthen crops in anticipation of the continuing impact of climate change on food production. They are Varsha, Dhanu, Chingam, Kunju Kunju Varna, Kunju Kunju Priya, Gauri and Swetha. Similarly, Sri Arun and Sri Varun are new varieties of sweet potato. Anaga is new variety of tomato. Three new varieties of forage crops are also identified. BL180, JHO991 and RO19. Summary let us summarize what we have learned. There are 13 nutrients essential for crops. Of these, 6 are required in large quantities and are known as macronutrients, whereas 7 nutrients are required in small quantities and are known as micronutrients. Manure and fertilizers are the main sources of nutrient supply to crops. Organic farming is a farming system with minimal or no use of chemicals as fertilizers, herbicides, pesticides, etc. And with a maximum input of organic manures, recycled farm wastes and bioagents with healthy cropping systems. Mixed farming is a system of farming on a particular farm which includes crop production, raising of livestock, etc. Mixed cropping is growing of two or more crops simultaneously on the same piece of land. Growing two or more crops in definite row patterns is known as intercropping. The growing of different crops on a piece of land in pre-planned succession is called crop rotation. Varietal improvement is required for higher yield, good quality, biotic and abiotic resistance, shortening the maturity duration, wider adaptability and desirable agronomic characteristics.